Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Recognized, Nightwing, B, 0, 1. Recognized, Zatanna, 2, 5. Initiate, Super Sweethearts. Welcome to the cave, everyone. And welcome also to the third installment of Super Sweethearts, the series where heroes hold hands and we all know smoochy moments are important. Here I'll be talking about teen heroes in love and diving into the romantic arcs of Young Justice and what we can learn as creators about portraying relationships in fiction. As a disclaimer, I want to say that all forms of shipping are subjective. The relationships I love, you may hate, and the emotional moments that I think are strong and well executed may come off as forced to you. It's all a matter of opinion. So, like any sort of analysis or writing advice, take everything I say with a grain of salt. There is no one right way to write a love story. I'm just going to be diving into a few and sharing with you some of the subtle details you might have missed if you weren't as focused on everyone loving each other as I was. Today, we'll be talking about a pair of young heroes with an affinity for wordplay. Shallant, or Dick Grayson and Zatanna Zatara for the uninitiated, since they won our last Twitter poll for what ship I should talk about. And as a quick spoiler warning before we dive in, I will say that I'll be talking about who ends up with who and how we get there. So be prepared for spoilers on that front. Look, I'm trying to be all nonchalant here. Why? Be as chalant as you like. Tornado never knew my moves. And I bet you've got some good ones. Well, sorry, that may have come off a little too wally. <laughs> I don't mind. So. The first appearance of Robin and Zatanna as a couple is actually on Young Justice. Just like Spitfire and Super Martian, they don't have a long-standing comic book history. And while Zatanna, as an adult, has been paired off with Bruce Wayne in a few continuities, YJ is the first time she's been in a relationship with Dick Grayson. And I think it's adorable. <laughs> And as far as I know, they haven't appeared together as a couple in any other sort of DC media. If I'm wrong about that, feel free to let me know on Twitter. And as we talked about last episode, when it came to some of the YJ ships, the fandom came up with some really clever and unique names for the relationships, instead of just the traditional way of mashing both character names together. For Dick Grayson and Zatanna... They were briefly called Rob Tana after she was first introduced in season one, but the fandom quickly settled on Chalant instead, at least in part because it erased any of the confusion created by there being multiple Robins. But the origin of that name came from Humanity, where Robin mentioned that he was trying to be all nonchalant about her powers, only for Z to cut him off and tell him to be as chalant as he liked putting her own little twist on his signature wordplay. <laughs> At the start of the show, Robin and Zatanna are only 13 and 14, respectively. More so than any of the other members of the team, these two are kids, and it's important to keep that in mind when talking about their relationship arc. Young Justice does a fantastic job of presenting these two as just really young teenagers with a mutual crush rather than some sort of epic love story, and that also works to set their relationship apart from some of the others on the show. Connor and McGann are fully committed to each other in season one, Wally and Artemis are constantly dancing around whatever's between them, and don't even get me started on everything going on with Red Arrow and Cheshire. But Robin and Zatanna are allowed to be awkward freshmen who don't quite know how to communicate their feelings toward each other, and that's okay. They're both clearly attracted to each other, but their narrative doesn't have to go further than that. There's none of the aggressive tension that exists between some of the other ships, simply because both of them are a little too young to be as serious about that attraction as some of the older characters are. The almost childish interactions that Robin and Zatanna have in season one are what makes their relationship feel so real and so cute. They're just friends who kind of want to hold hands and maybe kiss, but they're both a little too awkward to ask about that. Yet, despite their age, these two flirt a lot. 
when they first meet in humanity, it seems a little like they might just be too awkward to even speak to each other, but they settle into conversation pretty quickly. And once they do, a lot of their dialogue is just casual flirting and banter. Flirty dialogue can be hard to write, I know from experience, and it can be especially difficult for awkward teenagers. But YJ pulls it off with Chalant mainly by having both characters approach it with a lighthearted playfulness that reflects their younger age. Neither of them take any of it too seriously. They're both smiling and joking and enjoying themselves throughout all of it. So many of their interactions are just Robin trying to get her to laugh, and that kind of joking tone also adds to the weight of their more serious scenes. It's a really good approach to this kind of early relationship dynamic, so keep it in mind if you're trying to write your own playful flirting in your stories. While the rest of the team might be dealing with their own teen angst, Robin and Satana just get to be kids around each other most of the time which is something we often forget about Robin specifically. Despite being the one who's done this whole superhero thing the longest, he's barely a teenager at the start of the show. So his flirtationship with Satana allows us to see a very different side of him. When writing relationships, remember that they can often reveal new aspects of your characters. Robin in love is different from the character we see early on. Not drastically different, but just different enough. Up until humanity, Robin is always portrayed as very confident and occasionally overconfident. He seems to know what he's doing most of the time. But the minute Zatanna walks into the cave, he's tripping all over himself to make a good impression. He doesn't have any idea how to deal with a newfound crush, but he's trying his best. <laughs> Satana catches him off guard in the best way possible, and keeps doing it throughout the show. It's not only ridiculously cute, but it also is a great bit of character development as it shows us a very different side of who Robin is. Not just the mature crime fighter, but the kid with a crush. <laughs> And I think we can safely assume that little 13-year-old Dick Grayson had never really had any sort of romantic relationship before meeting Zatanna. The comics even imply that he had no idea that one of his best friends, Barbara Gordon, had a huge crush on him until she literally kissed him at his 14th birthday party. So if you're trying to pull off first crushes and young love in your own stories, you can definitely keep the Chalant mute cute from humanity in mind, as well as some of their later interactions. That awkwardness hinting at a mutual attraction, that uncertainty about how to grapple with those feelings, those fumbling early attempts at making conversation as they both try to get to know each other. It all works perfectly for the kind of adolescent relationship that they're supposed to represent in this narrative, and transitions nicely into their later flirtations once both of them are more at ease with each other. One of the most important things to keep in mind when writing relationships is the question of whether your characters are evenly matched and well-suited for each other. No matter what kind of dynamic you're going for, a huge power imbalance between your characters can make a romance not only difficult to establish, but also really hard to root for. If characters can't keep up with each other, it's never going to work out for them. And at first glance, Robin and Zatanna kind of seem to be at opposite ends of the spectrum. She's an incredibly powerful sorceress, and he's just a kid with a few gadgets. Or, if you prefer, he's a highly trained detective, and she's just an amateur magician. Either way you phrase it, in those terms, they seem completely incompatible. But despite those differences in superpowers and character backgrounds, Robin and Zatanna are actually remarkably well-matched. In terms of age, maturity, intelligence, personality, and outlook on life, they've actually got a lot in common. And that equal footing is demonstrated perfectly in one particular scene in Humanity, the one that gave Chalant its name. We all know the scene I'm talking about. I'm trying to be all nonchalant. Why be as chalant as you like? And while that early flirting is precious all on its own, it also shows that Zatanna's mind works just as fast as Robin's. 
This one exchange acts as shorthand to establish a connection between these two characters because it communicates that one of the things they share is an understanding of language and a desire to dissect it, which makes perfect sense for Zatanna backwards is my native tongue Zatara. Season 1 clearly establishes how smart Robin is, but this one quick scene with Satana places her on the same intellectual playing field as him, with just a couple of sentences, and immediately endears her not only to the audience, but to Robin himself. It also works as a fabulous example of how to imply connection and shared interests without having to stop everything to call attention to it. It's a simple show-don't-tell casual reference to something that we as the audience are already familiar with, and that communicates so much more super quickly. And then the scene is able to just continue on, and the plot moves forward. It's really just that simple. So keep that little lesson in mind, and remember to think outside the box when it comes to figuring out which of your characters might share a deeper connection, and how that connection might manifest itself. Try to look past the superficial aspects that two characters might share, and instead find something a bit more complex and unique that makes the relationship special and puts your two characters on the same level. There's another underlying connection between Robin and Zatanna in season one that the show only barely touches on, and that's the idea of characters bonding through loss. Robin's origin story involves the loss of his entire family during a trapeze performance, while Zatanna loses her father to the helmet of fate in a heartbreaking scene in Misplaced. Through a single shared look between Robin and Zatanna near the end of that episode, This becomes an unspoken connection between the two of them. The show doesn't talk about it much, only really alluding to it briefly in that one scene when Robin checks in with her during Wally's birthday party in Cold Hearted, but for many discerning fans, it becomes an important part of their relationship. If the show had been focused solely on Robin or Zatanna, I'm sure we would have seen more of this dynamic, but... As I said in the Spitfire episode, just because we don't see every conversation in a romantic arc doesn't mean we can't infer what might have happened off screen. And just because we didn't see much of this aspect of their relationship doesn't mean we can't learn from it. The setup here implies that the two of them can support and comfort each other because they both understand the other's grief and loss. Having characters experience similar events in your own fiction can often forge stronger bonds between them as they now share a greater empathy and understanding of each other. The loss Satana experiences can also be read as an obstacle in the Shalant relationship. Perhaps the process of her dealing with her own grief after her father's symbolic death prevented her from being open to a more serious romantic relationship up until the very end of season one, that is. In your own fiction, it's important to explore both sides of a narrative element. In this case, how shared experiences can simultaneously bring people together and also push them farther apart. And speaking of relationships being split apart, if you remember in season two, when asked about how he got the glamour charm from Zatanna, Nightwing just says, we have a history. That's all the shallant we really get in season two, but if you read the comics, you know that they are definitely no longer a couple by the time we hit that five years later timestamp. The tie-in comics also tell us that Dick Grayson is still very close friends with all of his exes, including Zatanna. We don't know much about how their relationship progressed or didn't over the course of the five-year time skip, But we do know that somewhere along the lines, they broke up, but that it didn't destroy their friendship. They're still clearly attracted to each other. Seriously, read the comics to see that little birthday kiss situation. (laughs) But for unspecified reasons, they're not in an ongoing, committed relationship of any kind. The off-screen breakup is interesting since it carries the narrative message that the first person you fall in love with is not always the person you stay in love with, but I find the aftermath of the end of their romance fascinating too. 
It's easy to rely on the tried and true tropes of bitter exes or heartbroken lost loves, and those narratives have survived so long for a reason. Loss, anger, despair, spite, those can all be compelling character motivations that can enhance your character's story. And YJ also gives us a super compelling breakup arc similar to those tropes, and full of complex emotions in the form of Super Martian storyline in Season 2. But allowing your characters whose relationship has run its course to split up while still remaining friends afterwards can be just as narratively effective. Nightwing getting the glamour charm in Season 2 only makes sense if he and Zatanna are on good terms. And that only works if they both still care about each other five years after their first kiss. Their continued off-screen friendship is actually super necessary to make the plot work in Invasion. So if you want to write an emotional, tear-jerking breakup, go for it. <laughs> but if you want to go for something a little different in your fictional breakup aftermath, Take a look at 19-year-old Nightwing and Zatanna and how their relationship matured and evolved, even after they stopped dating. And speaking of their relationship post-breakup, that glamour charm scene is a little infamous for being the moment where Wally West, Nightwing's best friend, calls him a dog. Rich and I talked about this briefly in our last few comic review episodes, but I wanted to address it here too. The idea that Nightwing is a womanizer just because he has a few ex-girlfriends is honestly pretty ridiculous to me. Personally, I think Nightwing's general approach to dating within the series pretty quickly disproves that perceived reputation as an aggressive or manipulative guy who just cycles through women. Dick Grayson, as a character, consistently makes his interests known, but then backs off and lets the other person make the next move, at least in this series. And since we're talking about Chalant here, you can clearly see it in his interactions with Satana in season one. Robin rushes to introduce himself to her, he's friendly and tries his best to talk to her despite his obvious crush, but the second he says something that might be considered a little too flirty, he immediately apologizes. Zatanna reassures him that she doesn't mind him flirting, and that reassurance is what allows him to keep doing it for the rest of the season. When we get to that New Year's Eve scene in the season finale, Robin doesn't look like he's even going to attempt to steal a kiss. Zatanna's the one who kisses him, not the other way around. And that's true of the other two canon kisses they share in the comics as well. In all three cases, Zatanna's the one who makes the first move when it comes to actual physical affection. And that's pretty important when understanding their dynamic. Dick Grayson never assumes that he's entitled to a relationship with her, or acts aggressive or manipulative in his advances. He just presents himself as an option and lets Zatanna make her own choice. For me, the kind of respect and understanding he shows her, and presumably every other girl he's dated in the series, proves that Nightwing is far from being the womanizer some people assume he is. And while they may be just friends now, Dick Grayson's first love will always be the fabulous magician girl who likes to break the English language as much as he does, and Zatanna will always have a soft spot for the original boy wonder. As always, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on our website crashingthemode.com, on Tumblr at the yjfiles.tumblr.com, and at our email address whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. While you wait for that DC streaming service to launch, consider buying the show somewhere online, and don't forget to hashtag buy YJ Comics on Comixology. That's the best way to read the totally platonic flirting situation Nightwing and Zatanna have going on during that little pre-season two arc. And to tune in soon for the next episode of The Young Justice Files. And remember, stay whelmed. You've been listening to Whelmed, The Young Justice Files podcast. 
Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Stay whelmed.